Good evening. Well, today is probably the ninth day that I've been in the position as the director of Belt, Missouri. Uh, nine days have went by really quick. It seems like maybe a month and a half, but uh, it has been many days. During that process of time, there's been a lot of catching up and needed to be taken care of that wasn't taken care of. Uh, our emergency grants, the MPGs, I thought I at least one credit I was going to be able to carry over. Uh, they seemed to let us do that. Once they changed the directors, all credits we had was gone. So with that being said, that meant I had, had three months to pick up four credits go through the exercises and get completions done on this part. I can proudly say as of Tuesday, when I left Warsaw, Missouri, we had a full functional tabletop exercise and mass sheltering, and all four of my credits now are complete. I had two in Gladstone and one in Raymore, so that part has been done. Uh, along with that, uh, I've had to take a bunch of IAS courses, a total of 10. And I was making notes today about what to tell you all here at the meeting tonight, that the courses that I've completed and got my diplomas on. And lo and behold, in the mail today, I got this certificate. I'd like to pass it around and let you all see it. There was a total of 10 courses in the IS courses. I had to go through the 100, the 200, the 700, the 800, the 139, the 230. 235, 240, 241, 242, and 244. I've already got with marks. I'm signed up for December's 5th, 6th, and 7th to go to Overland Park training facilities and take the IS 300 course, which would be a three-day class. And hopefully I get the 400 class in, but I don't know if it's going to fall in this year. I'll probably catch it first part of that. Uh, also, we're planning on starting uh, Next month, and in November, which is around the corner, with the advisory board, I've already started reviewing our EOP, started making some uh, corrections I think needs to be put in there. So we will officially get started on this thing with the advisories and the other department heads and try to get this thing going, which is way past due. We know that. Uh, also, myself and Steve Holly, the fire department, we had a deal that's been around for quite a while. I don't think anybody is free with it. It's called Web EOC. Uh, the county got this through a grant well, six, seven, eight years ago, eighty some thousand dollars. And basically, it's uh, internet communications between the, between the counties and uh, here ourselves here locally. Well, Steve Holly uh, attended one of the training sessions with me on this, and he is very much in favor of it. And the reason I am so much want to get this thing actively and get it going is it's going to be really good for all of our documentations. We can put stuff in our belt and log, put it in our archives. We come back four or five years from now, say we're on a certain storm watch, we have a certain incident, we can come back and we know exactly what happened, exactly what was taken care of and what was done. So when this thing gets involved and get going, I think it'd be very good that some member of the council would like to uh, be like an administrator on this thing. So if we are out on uh, our storm watches or other incidents in town uh, are going on, you guys can at your own house can look on our log. You can because we'll be documenting stuff even during our storm seasons, uh, but where our certain individuals are posted at, what conditions are at that time, and I think it, I think it's something that'd be really nice to kind of move forward with. It's been there, but for some reason uh, this hasn't been utilized. Uh, I think. Stan Swagger to Cass County, been using it quite a bit, and uh, Mike Booz and Raymore. Other than those two individuals, uh, it's been nothing there. So, I mean, it's there for us to use, and uh, with some training uh, on this thing, which is, it, it's not rocket science, uh, I think it's be beneficial to whatever department heads even want to use it. Make it go into public works, it can go into the Dalton Police Department, uh, planning could use it. It could be a really, a, the whole thing to the whole city to join in together in this thing with if it happens to work out, everybody's interested in doing it. Uh, one last thing, I, ha I had a little individual, a fifth grader, at uh, Mill Creek. 
Uh, he's really excited about emergency management and about federal signal sirens. Well, my wife works with this lady that's his mother that said, you think Bobby Miller would have time to take this little boy out and show him some emergency management stuff? This kid, whenever the sirens goes off, the teachers let him go outside, he has his camera, he's taking pictures of these sirens. He has pictures of sirens in Belton, in Grandview, and all around. Boy, this kid's really into it. So I said, yes, I'd be happy to. So I made arrangements with Mill Creek uh, to pick this little young man up at 3.15 one afternoon. Went down there, picked him up. I walked into the office, I said, oh, I'm Bobby Miller. Said, well, we know who you are. You're here to get Josh Carr, aren't you? I go, well, yeah. She said, that's what we've heard about all day long. This little kid's just waiting to see you. So she gets on the PA system and says, hey, coach, hey, coach, Bob Miller's up there for Josh Carr, and he comes flying up through there into the office. So I got to meet Josh. We took him outside. The first thing he had to do is get his little camera out and take a picture of Bima 1, the Jeep. Got him in the car, got him all buckled up, and he started explaining all the siren systems and stuff to me and how they work. He, I see, he thought he knew how they work. So we took him out to the city park. We parked a car there, and I was trying to explain to him how to work off radio signals and this and that. And he's sitting there, his eyes are all lighting up, you know, trying to understand this. And I says, now, Josh, we have a bad storm here, and I need to send my people out on storm posts. We can do it here right now. He goes, you can? I go, well, yeah. So I reached in the back seat and I pulled the iPad out. I go on mobile phone and I sent him all uh, like a page out. But I used my number itself and laid it in his Josh's lap and said, "Hi, Josh. No storms today." It was only a minute. And this little kid's going, "Whoa!" You know. <laughs> so we left there and uh, took him out to the to the fire station and uh, took him through the EOC, showed him all the radios, the weather radars. Give him a little bit of basic knowledge on radar, showed him the computer was out there, it has all the sirens on there, the location, showed him how I can pull them and test them and see if one's bad or not, and this and that. And uh, he had to get his camera out, and lo and behold, he took a picture of my computer with the sirens on it. He has that now, too. And uh, the fire department knew I was bringing this young man up there, and uh, they went ahead and took him out into the fire bays and gave him a little tour of the fire trucks and the ambulances and stuff like that. And, they tabbed her, gave him a bunch of stuff for fire prevention week, and took him back in my office and got a bunch of old emergency man and stuff I had. I had some old decals to give him, and I had, a, had an old white hat that I've had for quite a while. And I told Josh, you know, I've had this hat for a long time, buddy, and I used to have a lot of storm watches, and I just love that you have this hat, sir. So I gave Josh that hat. And uh, his father came up there at about 5, 15, 5.30 that night to pick him up, and he was thankful, saying, well, thanks, Bob, for, you know, my boy really appreciates this. And I go, well, you know, I appreciate my boy more than the, probably the kid does. Well, lo and behold, I heard last night, my wife told me, they said, you know what Josh Carr is going to be for Halloween? So I'm thinking, hmm, no, not really, maybe a emergency management or something like that? Nope. Lo and behold, this kid, I don't know where he's at, but he's going to be walking around like a federal siren <laughs> for Halloween. <laughs> but uh, I can honestly say, oh, I'm also, I've left one thing out before I close here. Uh, I'm also right in that process now working on a, presenta a PowerPoint presentation uh, for general awareness that we can present to the public, uh, you know, for in-home sheltering, things you can do, don't do like that. So that's in the process of being in the works. Um, and I've, I've had a few meetings with the Assembly of God Church, and I've got a meeting coming up, uh, the first of member for Lock Lloyd. But with that little boy, Josh Carr, probably in the 90 days that I've been here so far, that was probably the most heartwarming thing that I've seen in my own self for a long time. But they go, once again, that falls back on this city. And I said this a long time ago to you people, Belton's a great town. Belton's great people, and I'm proud to be here this first 90 days your emergency manager. Are there any questions? Yep. I, I got a comment, Bobby. <clears throat> Bobby and I have met a couple times here recently, and one of the concerns he has, and I want to make a point right now that Steve Hawley is just working uh, absolutely cooperative with the police department and the fire department are working with Bobby. Bobby's working with them. I think that this is a uh, a blessing with the cooperation that we're seeing now at all those levels. Bobby and I talked about this committee a little bit. I've talked to Kim, who's the other member on it, and 
and we're going to have a meeting in November and we'll have one in the spring and uh, we're putting that together and during that conversation Bobby mentioned that there is a concern they have that when they have the people out in the various sighting positions that uh, they depend on the weather information that would come through the fire chief or fire department server and uh, a couple times it's been down Steve Ollie's had to come in or someone come in and light it off and that's their lifeblood for the people that are out in the field they, to give them warnings if the storm changes course or whatever so I told him with my technical background that I would get with the fire department and him and I've already talked to school district a little bit the technical people down there about some options we might have to ensure that we always had weather information available there at DOC to be able to warn the people if certain things happen and I think Bobby just because you see one tornado doesn't mean another one can't drop out of the sky anywhere. So I'm pretty excited about that. I know Kim is excited about uh, the two of us being on the advisory committee to help out. And as we may have mentioned, that the meeting in the fall will kind of look at preparations for the community uh, for things that might come up like power outages due to ice storms and things of that nature. The meeting in the spring would look at uh, preparedness and readiness of the community to handle such things as flooding and heavy weather and extreme winds. So I just wanted to make a public comment here that the fire department, police department have gone out of their way to help Bobby and, and vice versa. I think we're headed down the right path. So I wanted to mention that Mayor Pro Temp tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that comment, Councilman Hoffman. Any other comments? Bobby, I think we need to thank you for your dedication to your job. Thank you very much. Very pleasing. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.